Hello and welcome to this video. In 1984, the F1 calendar took the big circus into a new truck in the USA, Dallas. And it was scheduled to be right after the other USA race, the Detroit Grand Prix. So, they were trying to sell it big to the Americans with two races held in the USA, one after the other. Note that this race was cancelled in 1985 due to financial problems and safety concerns and never came back to the F1 calendar. This race was replaced by the Australian Grand Prix in 1985 at the street circuit of Adelaide. Today we are meeting this one-off F1 racing circuit. Are you ready? Let's go! It was held on July 8, 1984 at Fair Park in Dallas, Texas. As I mentioned, it was the only running of the Dallas Grand Prix as a Formula One race and the ninth race of the 1984 Formula One World Championship. The 67 lap race was held in very hot weather on a disintegrating track and was won by Finnish driver Keke Rosberg driving a Williams Honda with Frenchman René Arnoux second in a Ferrari and Italian Elio De Angelis third in a Lotus Renault. Englishman Nigel Mansell took pole position in the other Lotus Renault and led for the first half of the race before suffering a gearbox failure at the very end and collapsing from exhaustion while trying to push his car over the finish line. That's classic footage in my book. The race was one of only two races in 1984 where both of the year's dominant McLarens, driven by Niki Lauda and Alan Prost, did not score, Belgium being the other, and gave Honda their first turbocharged Grand Prix win, and also their first Grand Prix win since the 1967 Italian Grand Prix. René Arnoux Ferrari was the only other car in the lead lap at the end, after started in the last place due to a misfiring engine in the parade lap, while Elio De Angelis came home third for Lotus. It was the only race of the season that cars using Goodyear tires filled all three podium positions. Only eight cars finished the race due to crashes or engine failures, in up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 38 degrees Celsius hit and also the truck was breaking up very badly as in the 1980 Argentine Grand Prix. The tight and twisty course was temporary and was laid out on the Texas State Fair grounds with help from United States Grand Prix West founder Chris Book and featured two hairpin curves. The circuit was laid out among the buildings of the state fairgrounds with the main requirements to avoid usage of exterior roads and keep the noise in local residential areas to a minimum. The circuit was lined with concrete walls topped by chain-link fencing along its entire length, even in areas where runoff could have been added. That made that all corners were blind, the teams insisted the pits be as close to the paddock structure as possible, which led to the pits and start-finish being placed in the northeast corner of the grounds. Let's pause the circuit history here for a bit and watch an onboard video. It's not the best I have ever presented here, but it is what it is. I cannot change it for the better. bobbing about as he bounces down the start finish straight here at Dallas into turn one at about 120 miles an hour in fourth gear. This is a tricky bumpy double apex right-hander which leads into another bumpy double apex left-hander. He's accelerating all the way through here probably up to about 130 here and accelerating up to about 150 at this point here before he breaks hard for this first sharp left-hander down to probably second gear there. More very quick acceleration up here into this right-hander. He's now going to uh, quite a complex long left-hand turn, which he can't see anything like as well as we can, because his eyes are about two feet lower than this camera. As he breaks, teams down to first for this tricky corner here. The surface is breaking up badly there. This is the slowest part of the course, the hairpin. Again in first gear. Accelerate.
gates up to fourth gear here, quite a quick bit of track, 130 miles an hour, as he swings right and left into this high-speed complex, onto a concrete surface there, off the asphalt. Brakes hard on that concrete, left and right, second gear. The road falls away there, very close to that wall. Five cars have hit that in practice so far. Up to pretty high speed here, back to fourth, as he comes into this long left-hander, accelerating through here all the way. Quite a quick corner, 130 miles an hour. And he's now on the fastest part of this course, doing 165 or 170. As he brakes, changes down to second for this right and left chicane. The road surface is breaking up here as well. This lap's taking, Patrick, about a minute and 50 seconds for the viewers. In real life, he'll be doing it in about a minute and 40 seconds. And he'll be changing gears somewhere about 35 times during this lap, which works out to about once every three seconds. And here's four of those changes coming up as he breaks down to first gear for this very sharp hairpin. Tremendous acceleration out of that in first, second, third, fourth, back to third for this, the last turn, as he turns onto the start finish straight again, and another very big bump. While the layout was seen as interesting and was generally well received by the drivers, though some thought one or two of the chicanes made it tighter than it needed to be. All had issues with the lack of runoff areas and the crumbling surface, which during the race itself made the track more like a rallycross track than a Grand Prix circuit. It was bubbling before qualifying, and after a few laps, it began to break apart. After the first practice on Friday, the Lotus drivers Nigel Mansell and the Angelis who both started from the front row with Mansell recording his first career pole position, said the temporary course was the roughest circuit they had ever driven. Nelson Piquet wondered whether the track, the drivers or the cars would break first in oppressive heat. Afternoon qualifying saw temperatures continue to rise past 38 degrees Celsius, and Goodyear recorded the highest track temperature in their 20 years of racing, 66 degrees Celsius. This venue was the place where Martin Brundle had a near career ending crush in practice. The front of the single seater in aluminium is crushed. The British driver is still conscious and tries to get out of the cockpit. The stewards arrive on the scene, extract him from the wreckage and Brundle tries to stand. I quote, I had never fractured a bone before. I tried to take a few steps and fell to the ground because my left foot was no longer attached to my leg. My foot was only held in place by a tube of skin. End quote says Brundle in his book, Martin Brundle's Scrapbook. Brundle said he lost consciousness a few times during his transfer to the circuit's medical center before being rushed to hospital. Some doctors are really worried about the onset of gangrene and believe that their foot should be amputated. Luckily, Dr. Sid Watkins is on site and prohibited from performing this surgery. In addition, his right leg is also damaged, but the fractures are less serious. Dr. Watkins organizes the repatriation of Brundle to the United Kingdom in order to operate. Brundle, on strong painkiller medication, lies on two reclined first-class seats. In London, Watkins consults with fellow orthopedists around the world and finds a good way to operate, which is quickly done. But he was never the same driver after that, suffering sequels for the rest of his life. The race was scheduled to start at 11 a.m. on Sunday, three hours earlier than usual because of the heat. With a 30-minute warm-up planned for 7.45 a.m., this was apparently too early for French Williams driver Jacques Lafitte, who arrived at the circuit in his pyjamas. Amazing. The warm-up was delayed and then cancelled, however, because a 50-lap Can-Am race on Saturday had damaged the circuit so badly that emergency repairs had gone on all night and would continue until 30 minutes before the start. It was a true mess. Niki Lauda and Alan Prost tried to arrange a boycott among the drivers, but Rosberg insisted they should race. I quote, 
I don't know what all the fuss is about. We'll all complain and bind right up until the start time and then we'll go out and race as usual. We've come all this way and the race is all set up. Track surface or no track surface. You know as well as I do, we'll race. End quote. Keke Rosberg speaking before the race. Despite all this, it was one of the best races of the year. The oppressive heat was a factor of the Dallas Grand Prix becoming a one-off and the event was replaced by following year's Australian Grand Prix. Formula One has since returned to the state of Texas, hosting the United States Grand Prix since 2012 at the newly constructed Circuit of the Americas, located in the state capital of Austin. However, the race in Austin has always been held in October or November, away from the Texan summer. The heat also caused some drivers to take some countermeasures to cope with the heat such as Rosberg's water-cooled skullcap, a common device in the NASCAR circuit, Pierre Loginzani, who finished fifth after overtaking the collapsed muscle, having a bucket of cold water thrown over him during a pit stop, and Hub Rosengatter, who dashed straight to a spectator area after he retired from the race, where he commandeered several cups of water, for pouring over his nether regions. Ayrton Senna had retired from the race on lap 47 while running fourth after hitting the wall. On coming back to the pits, he was furious, telling his race engineer, Pat Simmons, I just cannot understand how I did that. I was taking the same line as before. The wall must have moved. His team did not believe him and Senna persuade them to inspect the wall after the race, only for them to find that the barrier had indeed been moved by an earlier crash, moving only by a mere 4 to 10 millimeters into the track. Simmons recalled his amazement in 2004 saying, I quote, That was when the precision to which he was driving really hit home for me. Don't forget, This was a guy in his first season of F1, straight out of F3. End quote. I have that full story in this video, link in the description. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it with your friends, leave a line in the comments section if you have something to say or ask, and subscribe for more videos like this. I see you in the next video. Take care.